Good, uh, good afternoon, everybody, and it's a great pleasure to be able to welcome Prime Minister Gentiloni to Downing Street. Uh, just as I chose to visit Italy shortly after coming into office, Prime Minister Gentiloni has made the UK one of his first trips, and I think that underlines the importance that we both place on the long-standing relationship between our two countries. As I've said before, Britain is leaving the European Union, but we're not leaving Europe. And a global Britain that stands tall in the world will be a Britain that remains a good friend and ally to Italy and to all our European partners. So we have had important discussions today on the future of our bilateral relationship as the UK leaves the EU and on a number of areas at the heart of Itali Italy's presidency of the G7. And we've agreed to establish a regular bilateral summit between the UK and Italy. The UK remains committed to triggering Article 50 by the end of March. Last night we moved a step closer with the successful passage of the bill in the House of Commons. As I've said, the priority for the UK in the negotiations ahead will be to seek a new comprehensive, bold and ambitious free trade agreement with the European Union. Today we talked about the importance we both place on our trade. The UK is Italy's seventh largest export market for goods worth over 22 billion euros a year, and we do vital business in agriculture, manufacturing, pharmaceuticals, and defense. For example, already this year, the UK government has signed a 271 million pound deal with Leonardo Helicopters to provide maintenance for our Wildcat helicopters, protecting hundreds of skilled jobs in Yeovil. And together with the other free trade deals we intend to do, I'm determined that a global Britain will be a great champion of free trade in a way that can only be good for British and Italian businesses and jobs. A global Britain will also be a leading partner in addressing the wider challenges that Prime Minister Gentiloni and his government have put at the heart of Italy's G7 presidency this year, including making the global economy work for everyone, finding better solutions to managing the huge population movements we're seeing, and keeping up the pressure on Russia in response to its actions in Ukraine. Italy's been engaged in a long debate about how the benefits of prosperity can be shared by most, more people. And we're having a similar debate in Britain, where we've embarked on an ambitious programme of economic and social reform to spread wealth and opportunity more fairly across our country. And I hope that this year's G7 can help us go further in working with all our international partners to shape a global economy that truly works for everyone. And that same cooperation is vital for our security too. And just as we do in Afghanistan and at the forefront of the international coalition against Daesh, Britain and Italy will continue to work together for the security of all our citizens. And global Britain will continue to play a leading role in Europe's security through the NATO alliance. We will also continue to work together in tackling the migration crisis in the Mediterranean. Italy has become the main arrival point for illegal migration into Europe with over 180,000 people arriving in 2016. But this is not just a problem for Italy, it is a problem for us all. And we need to work together to find better solutions to the huge population movements we are seeing. So refugees don't have to risk their lives on dangerous journeys. And so we control the unmanageable economic migration that is neither working for migrants nor for our own populations. And we both strongly support the comprehensive and coordinated approach agreed at the EU summit in Malta last week. This includes seeking an inclusive political settlement to stabilize Libya, which will not only help to tackle migration flows, but also counter terrorism. And I welcome the agreement that was signed between the Italian and Libyan government last week on migration and on strengthening border security. Uh, Britain and Italy will continue to work closely uh, together, and I hope that through Italy's G7 uh, presidency, we can shape a new approach to managing mass population movements that's in the interests of all those involved. We must also do everything possible to protect men, women and children from trafficking, sexual violence and labour exploitation, and I'm grateful that Italy has put modern slavery on the G7 agenda for the first time, and hope that we can enhance the joint working between our law enforcement agencies to cultivate a radically new global and coordinated approach to defeat this vile crime that runs counter to our deepest values. Finally, on the situation in eastern Ukraine, I've emphasized the UK's continuing concern over Russia's aggressive and destabilizing actions and the drastic deterioration in the humanitarian situation we've seen recently. It's vital that the international community continues to exert pressure 
that we continue to maintain sanctions on Russia until the Minsk agreements are fully implemented. I want to thank you, Prime Minister, for your visit and for the constructive conversations that we've had. I believe today we've laid the foundations for continuing the strong and successful relationship between our two countries. I look forward to working with you on your G7 agenda and on uh, the UN Security Council this year and on shaping a new partnership between Britain and the EU that is in the interests of us all. Prime Minister. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, Many thanks. I would like to thank uh, Prime Minister May for her kind words and the welcoming I had here today. And I think our conversations have uh, reiterated the friendship and the closeness that our two countries historically have. And it is, however, important to reconfirm this at this point in time. And therefore, I really appreciate uh, the decision that we have taken in terms of bilateral meetings between our two governments uh, in the near future. This will help us um, strengthen uh, very old relationships that always uh, need uh, uh, nourishment. We have uh, obviously taken into account uh, what is necessary after the decision of the UK citizens of leaving the EU, a decision that we respect fully. And uh, we are aware of the fact that negotiations will not be easy. And we also know, and this will be certainly the Italian attitude, that we need uh, to show a constructive and friendly approach. Uh, there is absolutely no point at having a destructive negotiation between the EU and the UK. So obviously, we will do this uh, in the hope of uh, fostering the unity of the 27 countries, because without the unity of the 27 countries, it will be difficult to come to some agreement. And we must ensure this unity will result in the best possible agreement with the UK. We also have a very specific interest that we must both, uh, both uh, foster in reassuring our citizens uh, that I'm thinking about the Italians that live in the UK and the British citizens that live in Italy about the fact that their acquired rights uh, will be respected and there will be reciprocity. So there will be a very fair treatment. And from our point of view, it is uh, fundamental uh, to hear the message Mrs. May has just given us, and that is uh, that the UK decided to leave the EU, but this does not mean that um, the country will leave Europe. As far as Italy is concerned, uh, we can say that we are committed even though this decision did not fill us with joy. But this is what the UK citizens uh, have uh, decided. And we intend relaunching the EU. And this will happen at the end of March in Rome for the 60th anniversary of the Rome Treaty with the aim of celebrating the results so far, but also to look at the mission of the EU in the next 10 years in detail and uh, taking into account uh, the fact that it may be necessary to have different levels of integration, which uh, is uh, ap apparent since uh, a little time. And as Mrs. May said, we will uh, continue to foster good cooperation between our two countries. And uh, in the days ahead, and I'm not only thinking of the UK and the EU uh, negotiation, but also for the period that we are living in Italy, finally we see 
a, a little bit of growth, unfortunately not as strong as we would like it to be. But uh, I want to reiterate here that uh, we continue with the reforms and uh, the application of these reforms. So the Italian government shows continuity with what has been done in the last two or three years. And uh, we wish to ensure stability for what needs to be done. We have achieved important uh, results. And um, I would like to note that today we had an unprecedented result of the fight against the tax evasion, something quite unprecedented, 19 billion euros uh, that um, have been recovered. And also we have passed a decree on uh, our banks. So this means a stability at a time of reforms that continue and a common commitment between Italy and the UK in terms of the most important um, issues in Europe, in the Mediterranean and globally that touch both countries, and we will do this also during the G7 presidency, as Mrs. May has just uh, said, and this will be an opportunity to reconfirm our common values, uh, values uh, for our democracies and our civilization, and also a commitment towards uh, NATO and an even greater effort that uh, we need to face in order to face all the changes that globalization and technological innovation has brought about, and we need to reduce injustice. And finally, a cooperation between Italy and the UK in terms of the different issues that we see around us. In particular, we spoke of Libya because uh, Stabilizing this country is absolutely fundamental, not just for Italy, but for the whole of Europe. Uh, and this is due to the uh, migration flows, but also the risk that whilst uh, we have good success against terrorism, the fact that there could be um, terrorist cells that get organized in our countries, and therefore we need to cooperate in order to uh, stabilize Libya. And I very much uh, appreciate uh, the uh, support that I have received from London and the EU on this agreement uh, that is obviously an initial agreement uh, on which we will need uh, to build uh, over time between the Italian government and the Libyan government. But obviously, the support we receive from London and the EU is extremely important. We also discussed Syria, Somalia, the fight against terrorism and the different fronts on which we are engaged because um, this is part of the values that unite us and this is absolutely fundamental and if uh, possible we shall strengthen this well beyond the negotiation that we are about to start in a constructive manner between London and the EU.